One of the most important things that you can take away from a formalized education is information literacy. So the way that you access, analyze, and use outside information is one of the most important ways that you can interact with the world around you. Uh, once you start using outside information, you're leaving just that realm of your own mind, of your own instincts, of the way that your brain has evolved over the last 50,000 years and more, and it's time to interact with the broader world. Now, as we've all learned, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of stuff that's just plain wrong, and our access to it is better than ever. So what I want you to learn is this shorthand way to vet any information that you come across when you're going to use it in school or post it on the internet. And it's called the crap test. That's right, the crap test. There's two A's, so it's not really the word crap, but still. What you want is for your source to pass the crap test with flying colors to be crap certified in order to have a valid source that you're going to use in your class. So let's dive in. The C for crap test stands for currency. And what we're looking for is the year that it was published. When was this said? When was this research done? Now, this doesn't really apply for everything that you might use. For example, if you're using some foundational sort of philosophy, if you're using you know, the words of Aristotle or the words of Confucius, or if you're citing a quote from uh, the Tales of Genji, the oldest novel in the world, then uh, it doesn't really matter if it's not current, though the translation is going to matter. Um, what you're looking for is, uh, especially in the social sciences and the sciences, something that is within the last five or 10 years. You don't wanna go much older than that because the world of knowledge changes very, very quickly, quicker than ever. So is it up to date? Are the links functional? Is this something that's being maintained by somebody? Um, is this something that has had enough time for revision? Do we know more about this subject than we did when this was published? Currency really matters. Relevance. Um, how important is this to your work? Is this on topic? Now, one thing that you want to do is cross-reference this with other sources that you're using. If this is your first or second source that you've really uncovered Maybe it's not the best one for you to go with. You wanna be making sure that it makes sense and is directly related or related in some meaningful way to the topic that you're, that you're researching. And of course, what's the audience here? Um, who the audience is is going to really matter for the relevance of your research proposal. I mean, of uh, the research you're using. Authority. Who is taking credit for this? Um, there should be an author. If there's not an author, there should be a um, well-known and respected um, group organization that is taking credit for, um, for this research piece. Um, when my kids were little, we used to go to the bookstore and in the children's section, they have all these books that have familiar characters from, from cartoons and, and, and TV and movies and stuff, and they don't have an author on them. And I always told them that if, if, if the book doesn't have an author, it's not a book, it's a toy, um, or it's a, a, a sales gimmick. What you're looking for is someone who is proud to take credit for this work. That is one of the most important things. Now then, who is the author? What are their credentials? Um, do they work for a college? Do they work for the government organization? Do they work for something that's um, you know respected and understood to be valid? Um, if it doesn't have authority behind it, you might consider not using it. So some of those factors that you might consider is the URL. Are we at a .com? Because .coms are commercial websites, and of course there's so much variance in the world of commercial websites that it's gonna take a little more digging. A .gov is generally pretty good, of course. This depends on the regime you're under, but in the, for the most part, a government organization is going to have you know, well-researched information. Um, a .edu is probably coming from a college or some other educational um, foundation and it's probably a pretty good bet, and it's at least a good place to start, and I wouldn't eliminate it if it had a .edu. Can you contact the author? Can you contact the organization? It's great if you can find an email address or a phone number or a physical mailing address. Um, is there a publisher you need to try to contact or need to be able to contact whoever it is who's responsible for publishing this? If there is not contact information, it is unlikely uh, or it's less likely that you have a super valid, trustworthy source. 
tone. What is the tone of the writing here? A lot of exclamation points is great when you're texting your friends to let them know that you're not being passive aggressive, but it's not great in a published piece of information. If the information has a lot of exclamation points, mm, sounds like they're selling something here, like they're trying to, to show their point of view through some sort of like contrived enthusiasm. You want to stay away from it. What's the characterization of the tone? Does it feel like it's trying to be impartial? Because impartiality is one of the benchmarks of good scientific writing. To, um, this, uh, a tone of skepticism is a good um, thing to be looking for. If it feels too friendly and it feels too um, uh, salesy, you want to stay away. Accuracy. The second A in crap is accuracy. Um, what's the supporting evidence? Um, where is this coming from? Of course, you know, we, we, we very famously make a demonstration out of, out of Wikipedia, though many Wikipedia articles source out at their, um, where they're getting their information. And then you can follow those in, down their rabbit hole and find more valid information. So when, where you're sourcing, where you're referencing really matters. Has this been peer reviewed? You should have some way of knowing if this has been reviewed for publication rather than just grabbed from the internet. I mean, like, for example, did your uncle post this on Facebook? Is this why it crossed your radar? And if so, maybe you want to consider, again, the accuracy, the spelling and grammar. Spelling and grammar is absolutely important for the most part. A reasonable source that has been peer reviewed is not going to have a ton of spelling and grammar areas, errors or questionable um, mistakes being made throughout it. Um, when you start catching those things, it really damages the overall viability of the source. And finally, the purpose. Why does this exist? That's one of the basic questions you need to ask yourself with every piece of information that you get off the internet. What was the idea here? Um, what is the, the um, balance of fact, opinion, and propaganda going on? Because that's really going to matter to the way that you weigh out whether or not this is a good source. And of course, is this politically charged? Is this culturally charged? Because you really want to try and do your research on the research to see if you're finding something that's overly culturally biased, something that's that's pushing some sort of an agenda to, to push a superiority of one thing over another, or the continuance of some sort of um, unfounded and outdated power structure or um, social norm that uh, maybe uh, if, if it's relying on the establishment of these things rather than new research pertaining to them, probably something you want to avoid. So why this exists is going to illuminate a lot of this. Uh, and you always want to know, you know, wh what's the audience? What's the purpose? Um, you know, why did this come into being and how did it come across your radar? So that's the crap test. It is not foolproof, but it is one of the great gatekeepers that you can run every single source through before using it or before paying attention to it. And it's something that you can share with your friends and it lets you say crap in school, though. I mean, who's not saying crap in school these days? But here we go. All right, guys. Thank you very much.